flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Present. Trustee Roger? Present. Trustee Sweet? Present. Trustee Jackson Turkey? Present. Trustee Darian? Present. Mayor Yuk? Present. Uh, are there any changes to the agenda? Are there any changes to the agenda? I would like to do one. Indianette Park, Burr Ridge, Willowbrook, portions of uh, Darien, Downers Grove, Lamont, Homer Glen, and a few other things thrown in there as well. So, uh, but for the last three years, we've been in non-stop session. So when we finished session last November, we finally, we, we, we took a break. So this is the first opportunity I've had in a lot of, in many, many months, I would say in a couple of years, to come out and just say hello to uh, municipalities and also local uh, uh, local boards. So uh, it's great to be here, and I just wanted to just uh, say hello. Uh, I probably put a face with a name. Not that you probably haven't noticed anything in the mailbox recently, but uh, it's, it's that time of the year. But uh, you probably are aware we did get a budget passed this year. It wasn't the budget that I supported. There were things in it that do affect you. Some things are not really good, and I'm not happy about it. But the fact is, it is what it is. There was a cut in the local uh, LGDF, local government distribution fund, at one time hit about 10%, uh, something which I have not supported in the past. I just want you to know that. And as a matter of fact, you've done a fantastic job for the Illinois Municipal League of lobbying me day in and day out in Springfield against LGDF cuts. And our caucus has been consistent with that and not supporting it because we know that you have limited, limited resources to be able to operate with. We know that it's important for you to be able to have this money, to have some flexibility in the way in which you run your shop. Now, we're going to go back in, uh, and it will probably be another push next year when we begin this process again of having a budget. But before I get into that, just remember that the budget that was passed this past year, it was a budget with a tax increase. I couldn't support it because there were no reforms in it, but the fact is it was still $1.7 billion out of balance. You don't have the luxury, uh, Mr. Mayor, all of you, to be able to pass unbalanced budgets at an, an annual basis. It's something which we do on a regular basis down in Springfield, and that is what I'm fighting against, and I'll be campaigning against, and I don't want to get political here, but the fact is we have unpaid bills that keep growing and growing because of the unbalanced nature of budgets that continue to get passed. So we're going to begin, the begin we go back in the third week of January, and we're going to have our challenges ahead of us. I'm in the minority party, but the fact is, uh, 
there has been at least some recognition by the majority party that the House Republicans do have a meaningful role in the operations of state government. They're out of the supermajority. They need participation from the House Republicans to be able to get anything of a major, any type of major initiative done. Now, uh, we will go back down and there will be another push to be able to, let's find additional revenues uh, in which we could use to solve our budget problems as opposed to being responsible, cutting in areas where we should cut, making investments in areas where we should make investments. Uh, that's it's very simple. But one thing that we also need to reemphasize is that we have X amount of dollars that we bring in on an annual basis in which are projected to us sometime by the middle of January. Now, the whole idea about having a balanced budget is that we are going to budget and we are going to spend as much as what we bring in. It's a simple concept, and that is what my caucus and also the governor and the Senate Republicans will be standing for, and we'll make those comments, and I'll be very clear about that in the upcoming months. But know full well that if there is going to be another discussion about any type of adjustment with LGDF, one, I will oppose it, two, if the majority party is going to insist upon it, the only way that a Republican will consider voting for it, if there will be offsets on mandate relief, to ensure that there is going to be, at least what we call it a wash, so to speak, that you will be able to have reductions in your, in your the requirements that are uh, incorporated, that are also established by statute upon you, which really, uh, which we've heard over the years and years and years is these unfunded mandates. Everybody's got a different one, but the fact is, to me, that's the only solution, the only way in which you're going to be able to uh, manage uh, the issue of the local government distribution fund. Now, the other thing that I felt that was really unfortunate is that the Department of Revenue took 2% of processing costs out of the local sales tax. Uh, and we are very much uh, uh, going to ensure that that is going to be a one-time uh, assessment. It's not fair, it's not right. Again, it's an attack on local government. And where that concept came from, it was some bureaucrat probably in the Department of Revenue. And uh, it made its way into an imperfect budget. So. Uh, there are a lot of things in which we have to get done. We still have a significant uh, portion of bills that haven't been paid by the state of Illinois. I would be glad to say that we have reduced it by 50%. <coughs> we still have a large six to seven billion dollars of unpaid bills to anybody who does work for the state of Illinois. And that's a priority for myself and the governor. But also, you can't do that until you address the fiscal instability of Springfield about how we spend your money and manage the money of the state of Illinois when there's continuing, continuing recognition or lack their recognition of having a balanced budget. So those are the priorities myself. I don't know that my colleagues in the Senate and the governor have. Uh, the governor will have to give his uh, uh, state the state address and also his budget address in the upcoming months. But I know that you will uh, be looking at it with, uh, uh, with great attention because everything's basically on the table when it shouldn't be. We should be solving our problems internally as opposed to continually asking for Illinoisans, our small businessmen and women, our major employers, and also lo local governments to make greater sacrifices. It's just not fair. But those are the political realities that I have to live with in Springfield. But know that there are people down there that are willing to listen. And they're always, myself is one, and a uh, matter of fact, that's one of the criticisms I get is I have too many people come into my office. But the fact is, I will listen to anybody particularly when they want to drive three hours down I-55 uh, and uh, come visit me, I, I will give them the time of day. But I will just say this, there's a few th good things about this region and I think you should be proud of what's going on in Will County, is that uh, uh, since 2001, Will County has added 76,000 private sector jobs, uh, 40 new businesses opened up in 2017 with 6,200 6, new jobs in approximately $900 million of investment. So you have things to be proud of in this part of the state. Uh, there's other areas in the state that cannot say that. But I will just say that you guys do a good job. You operate and you work with uh, a very, very uh, tight budget. And also, uh, you're very responsible with your, your finances. So I wish that we could learn lessons from what you do and translate that, uh, translate that down to Springfield. But uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Now, I will, just, I will say that there was one good moment in Springfield history last summer when we actually agreed on something that was in our public education funding bill. And that's when all four legislative leaders and the governor actually rolled up their sleeves and went to work and got something done. It was the right thing. It was on balance. 
uh, a good thing for the state of Illinois for every child in public education, but also those who prefer an option, which we, which we put in legislation for the first time. So, uh, so those are some of the things that we have uh, addressed over the past year. I wish that things were more efficient. I think uh, Illinois would be better if we worked in a bipartisan manner. And that's what I preach. I tell the speaker that I will work with you on every major issue as long as you respect the priorities of my minority party. And uh, sometimes it, uh, it gets through, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, know that uh, there are many people down in Springfield who come from local government who do understand the challenges that you face. I came from local government from the school board back in the early 1990s. So I understand that you have to pass a budget and revenues have to meet spending, and uh, you go over that, and then you have to be held accountable to your citizens and the people that elect you. So again, I appreciate the, the work you do. Sometimes it's a, a thankless job being an elected official in local government, but know that many of us in Springfield came from these positions and appreciate what you do. So uh, I'm going to be making a, other visits within the district because like I said, this is the first time in three years we've had an extended break. And that's only been for a few weeks. So we're going back down in, in the end of January but Mayor and uh, the rest of the board members uh, come visit me sometimes, but you know where to find me. My office is in Burr Ridge, and uh, we're here to help. Sometimes we can't get all the, we can't get everything done, but the fact is we will try, and uh, that's what I offer to you. So with that, I want to thank you for this opportunity and wish everybody a very happy new year and know that uh, we're here to help. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. I appreciate it, too. Keep up the work. We got to keep our sales tax since we survived on. Thank you. I won't take those. In fact, I'll buy something on the way out, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Al. Okay, reports and communications from mayor and other officers. Uh, this December, the village made its final payment to the Homer Square sales tax sharing and sign off agreement that began in 2002 with the annexation of nearly 17 acre shopping center, which is now anchored by Jewel Hospital at 143rd Street and Bell Road. After the final payment, the village will realize $135,500 savings. Uh, New Year's Village Hall will be closed on Monday, January 1st and Tuesday, January 2nd in observance of, New of the New Year's. We hope that you and your family have a happy and safe New Year. Normal business hours will resume on Wednesday, January 3rd. Everyone drives straight and hopefully everyone has a very happy and prosperous New Year. Uh, Start down with Trustee Sweets. No report this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Trustee Rogers? Nothing to report. Thank you. Trustee Berrien? No report this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Trustee Nitsky Trachey? No report. Thank you. <coughs> Trustee Gray? I have no report, Mayor, but I would like to wish everybody a happy new year, a uh, safe and prosperous year for everybody, and that's it. Thank you. Uh, village Treasurer. Thanks, Mayor. I have the Treasurer's Report of Cash and Investments at November 30th, 2017. It's the seventh month of our fiscal year. It shows the general fund with a balance of $5,602,260.49. The Special Event Fund has a balance of $66,460.60. The Environment Fund has a balance of $80,547.38. The Motor Fuel Tax Fund had a balance of $2,940,231.22. Park and Recreation Fund had a balance of $3,446,650.70. The Debt Service Fund had a balance of $3,318,000. $608.59. The Capital Project Fund had a cash and investment balance of $1,071,648.82. The EAB Tree Replacement Fund had a balance of $356,533.71. The last fund, the Capital Project Bond Fund, had a balance of $14,000,000. $835,926.86 for a grand total, all funds, $31,718,868.37. And I'd like to wish the board a very happy, healthy, and safe new year also. Thank you, John. You too. Uh, Village Clerk. 
No report. Village Attorney. No report, Your Honor. Public Safety. No report. Village Manager. No report, Mayor. Public Comment. Bill Musselman, Musselman. You had it right the first time. Okay. Just like that. Was awesome. <coughs> My name is Bill Musselman. I live at 13830 South Red Apple Trail. And I'm here to represent my neighbors that live behind the Illinois American Water Treatment Plant. I'm here to basically open the communication between the village and the people that live in the surrounding area around the treatment plant for this uh, expansion. It's really not expansion because they're supposed to stay within an existing fence line. And if you go through the meeting minutes from October 20th, 2016, they went for rezoning. And then they came in front of your board. It was all approved. And it talks about construction fences. Um, that we had no communication with any homeowner association because we don't have them there. But I had stated that Mr. Musselman would be willing to put together a committee and talk to the building department and also the uh, uh, Illinois American Water and communicate through this whole process what was going to be going on in our backyards. So um, there's not a lot to say if you go back to these meeting minutes to read them. It even says that uh, Mr. Schwartz stated that Mr. Mike. Salmonitz, mm -hmm. is that his name? Uh, the development services director will sit down with them and uh, discuss any construction fences. Nobody has contacted us since last Wednesday when there was a, a planning meeting for Thursday. So really 24 hours in advance that there was gonna be an eight foot fence going up behind that. So <coughs> maybe because of the building engineers, not sure, but we sure would like to be involved with the, the expansion of this plant. When I moved there 33 years ago, I had 100 feet behind my property. There was supposed to be easement that they couldn't expand the plant <coughs> at that point. And uh, it did move back 50 feet. So now I have 50 feet of easement behind me and they're taking away that 50 feet of easement. If they knock down the existing fences, they're gonna tear out approximately 20 to 30 trees and it's gonna cut off the avenue for wildlife to come through Chickasaw Hills. There's deers all this is to come from the golf course. So um, I just want to be on the record that we're going to be contacting the village and the building department to try to sit down and talk to everybody. Um, I think the planning commission went last Thursday was a little upset because Illinois American Water has not reached out to us in 14 months. So we're reaching out to you guys and the building department at this point. We probably have 10 to 15 families around there that are willing to get together a committee and work with us. So that's yeah. it. Just well, want to put your opinion right now. All right. Well, then, Mr. Graver and yourself and myself will we'll sit down and figure out what we can do. Sure. My cell, cell phone numbers, I'm sure. sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, just as a summary, we, there, there hasn't been any construction on the site. They're still going through the permit process, uh, but we'd be happy to coordinate meetings with the, with the uh, IEW group and the residents. Can I respond to that? Mm -hmm. There has been construction yeah, on the site sorry. already. The gate is cut in. And there's uh, temporary electric put outside, so they're moving at it. I don't know if permits have been issued yet or not, but there's transformer and electric outside the fence already. Have we approved the permits? We've partially approved some portions of the permit. But I think it's ours. <laughs> Mr. Russell, we'll, 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 we'll give you a call and get something set up. Right Thank now. you. Thank you. You're welcome. So for public comment. <coughs> Legislation and action items. Is there a motion to approve ordinance number 17-070, an ordinance granting a variance to reduce the minimum lot frontage for property located in the E2 single family rural residential district from 270 feet to zero feet? Attachment one, table one B, set and structure bulk requirements for residential districts of chapter 220 zoning of the code of the village of Homer land for certain property known as pin number 16-05-23-300-043-0000 in Homer Glen, Illinois, Marsala. Case number HG1725B. 
So moved. That was Trustee Gray. Bearing. Bumper Bearing. Second. That's Trustee Gray. Discussion. I have a couple of questions, Mayor. When this came before the board in 2005, at that time, uh, it was for frontage a reduction of 180 feet to, to zero. Now it's 270, so I was just kind of curious about that. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's because at the time, the um, zoning regulations said that the minimum lot frontage for that zoning district were 180 feet. Those zoning regulations were changed around 2005, 2006. Um, staff attempted to find the ordinance, including those changes, so that we could provide that to you as part of the staff report. We couldn't track down, it was a part of an exhibit in the ordinance that gave the actual line item regarding the change from 180 to 270 for this district. We couldn't find the exhibit, it wasn't actually attached to the ordinance for whatever reason. Um, so it's our assumption that at the time it was 180 feet for the E2 rural residential district and now it's 270. And at that time, and I'm not sure, because I don't see it written into the motion, I don't know if it needs to be written into the motion, but I believe it was discussed previously that uh, also they would, I think you're the petition, okay, that they would, that emergency vehicles, they would provide a turnaround on that property. Could you give us an explanation of that? Because I know it's a narrow, it's a, yeah, uh, good evening. My name is Lyman Team, and I'm the attorney for the applicants. Uh, when we were up before the Planning Commission, and uh, actually I was present back in 2005 also when this, this originally came up, uh, we're at the very end of a long road that comes in off Parker Road, goes east for about a quarter of a mile, and then goes north for about a quarter of a mile. We're, we're at the very end. and. Um, as a condition in 2005 and also as a condition when, we're be when, we, when we were before your planning commission meeting a couple weeks ago, uh, we have agreed uh, in working with the fire department to provide kind of a hammerhead, pork chop, uh, turnaround uh, configuration on our property for emergency vehicles that have to go up, turn around and come back out on that road. That was one of the conditions we agreed to that uh, at the Planning Commission, we agreed to that this evening. The other condition on there was that uh, we understand that when we construct our home, that road is not a, not a paved road like your typical city streets. It's primarily gravel. Uh, we are in a position that when construction is completed or even during the course of construction, if necessary, to come back, regrade, and, and fix up that road to bring it back to its condition that existed prior to construction. We understand we're going to have concrete trucks and other vehicles coming along that road, and there may be damage <coughs> road depending on depending on weather conditions. And it is our intention to restore that as soon as the construction is completed. And you're agreeing to those conditions? Oh yes, yes, yes absolutely. Uh, attorney, do, does that have to be into the motion? I thought it, I thought it was in the resolution that appeared before the planning commission. I don't know if they put it in the one this evening. Is it in there, Kyle? No, it's not. So you should, you should keep that as a condition. Yes. You should incorporate those conditions. Yes. So. Well, uh, Trustee Barry has to take back his, and Trustee Gray has to take back his motion. Yeah, they have that into a court Oh, okay. Right. That's easy. Well, then, the amended motion will be just to keep what was in the original variance in place. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would amend my motion to include the conditions of uh, the original ordinance in um, this ordinance. The original variance. The original variance in this ordinance. Okay. And I'll second. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? The other, the other thing I wanted to mention was, will the other property owners in this map have to go through the same 
process? Because there are a lot of these that are, I mean, the issue here is that there's no frontage on the main road, right? On, on, on the actual road? None, none of the properties along that road, except for the ones that meet the, the one immediately out on Parker Road, none of the other ones have fronted on a dedicated road. Right. It's all in a private easement. That easement was created back in 19, I think originally in 1960, and it was amended in 1964. And about that time is when all these parcels were divided out. Um, that configuration would never be allowed today with the county or Homer Glen or anyone else, but it does exist and it was created back in the early 60s. So uh, the only property that conforms uh, and has frontage on a dedicated road is the first parcel coming in off of Parker. Right. Everybody else has no has zero frontage on a dedicated road. Right. I appreciate that. Um, I was it was kind of an open-ended question more to, to the village staff to say. Will this be an issue down the road, and is there a way that we can avoid having everybody having to go before the Planning Commission through uh, public hearings and things of that nature? That's a good question. We'd have to I mean, we, we, we have a lot of these deep lots in, in, in parts of the property in, in our village that are served like this. It, you, it, it depends on uh, the variance. I believe there's a, there's a setback variance on this, and uh, I'm not sure you could do a village-wide uh, overlay, if you will, for Lot, so you almost have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I think the village has been understanding when these cases come up, uh, but sometimes you do have to kind of dot the I's and, and cross the T's on these individual cases. Any other questions? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Nancy Turkey? Aye. Trustee Berrien? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. She carries. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there a motion to approve ordinance number 17071, an ordinance granting a special use permit for an automobile rental agency in C3 General Business District, attachment 2, J2A, permitted in special uses for non residential districts, chapter 220 zoning of the Code of Village of Homer Glen for 13030 West 159th Street, Homer Glen, Illinois, Enterprise Rent a Car. Case number HG 1728S. So moved. Mr. Gray. Second. Mr. Berrien. Discussion? Um, I'd like to add to this. I've spoken with um, Kyle and uh, Manager Mertens regarding the one portion of the, uh, of the One portion of it says that they, if there is not enough parking at the firm address where Enterprise will be located, that they can park at two other parcels that are owned by Dan Rich. And they didn't really care for that because, you know, if Dan Rich decided to sell those other two parcels of property or something, then the condition wasn't necessarily tied to that, that Enterprise would continue to park there. So then that overflow parking, if, there, if it did exist, would come back to the firm address where Enterprise is going to be and could cause a future problem. So I asked them to look into that, and I believe they came up with a, a, a creative solution that we'd like to add. I'd like to add as an amendment to this. So maybe yeah. they can tell you what that <laughs> creative solution is. Yeah, the suggestion is to do a cross parking agreement uh, for all of the damaged properties. Um, uh, this this overflow of parking is just on peak days, peak holiday days, where they have a spike in, in uh, car storage. So it's not like it's a day-to-day -day use. The day-to-day -day use, I believe, is two to five. Uh, vehicles which fits on the current property and then on uh, days like the 4th of July or key holidays they have a, uh, a spike so the thought would be create a cross parking agreement between the damaged properties that way in case one of the properties in the future gets sold they still have coverage that they can use off-site uh, storage. You're absolutely fine with me. So do I need to add that into the motion? Yes. So I would like to amend my motion to add the cross Parking. Help me. <laughs> Cross parking agreement for agreement. Uh, all three damage properties. For all three properties. Okay. Uh, any other? That would sound And we did check with the attorney, we also checked with Dan Rich and, and their support of that concept. Okay. I have a question. On those other properties, the 15822 and the 15806, are those active? Is that Dan Rich? 
business is there or are they, they rent it to somebody? Is there an active business there? There are active businesses there owned by Dan Rich. One of them is a standalone building and then another I believe they have a tenant space amongst maybe two or three others. They own pretty much the corner. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Spees? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Berman? Aye. Trustee Nathan Turkey? Aye. Trustee Gray? Aye. Aye. Uh, you do have it. You have the approval. Uh, and I know how Enterprise works with the cars, and most of the time, the parking lot is not full because you have them all out on rent. Correct. So I don't, I don't think there will be an issue, but. Well, yeah. that, that, um, that was the reason I showed up to make sure that, that any concern with the parking was addressed. Um, I mean, down in Lockport, similar size location we're expecting. Um, we have eight dedicated parking spaces in the strip center. Um, mm -hmm. That has not caused an issue to date. <laughs> um, so well, we're hopeful that um, the five spaces are plenty. We've got overflow as a backup plan. And in the future, if we grow to be a large location, we'll be looking for a relocation, hopefully, in Homer Glen. Okay. Thank you very, very much. much. Happy New Year. Same to you. Okay. Next is resolution number 17-009, approving a reduction <coughs> from the LOC for the Evelyn's Gate subdivision. <coughs> it's a motion to approve resolution number 17-009. Resolution approving a reduction in the amount of $92,355.99 from the $204,084.09 letter of credit for the Evelyn's Gate subdivision. It is understood that approval of this reduction will result in $111,728.10 remaining in the LOC. Do I have a first? So, uh, just to clarify, I have a second. Second. Trustee Gray, discussion. I'm just wondering, you know, how, how, when does this, when do we start doing some of these things? You know, we, we talked about this you know, back over a year ago. How much, when is he going to start doing this stuff? When is he going to finish the signage? And, you know, you go through there and it still looks like it's not done. I mean, is there a timeline? Is there a line in the sand here? Uh, the developer feels he's completed most of the items. We do know that there's some missing signage and some cleanup. Um, uh, there hasn't been a, uh, a timeline put out uh, for the developer, but if the board wishes, we can uh, try to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, uh, I think the developer is working a lot around what's selling and as we you know, finish up some things. Well, we're going out there and check for some of this? Yes. Yeah, there's definitely some miscellaneous signage that is missing. There's um, on some of the vacant lots, there's some backfill uh, behind the curbs that haven't been complete, um, things of that nature. The main infrastructure has been completed uh, last, this time last year, we completed uh, the um, final resurfacing on the roads, uh, the uh, curb replacements, um, finished the bike pad. Um, this season, he's definitely moving a little slower, but he completed the analysis on the stormwater detention. That was the next big issue in, in our uh, area. Um, so those all meet the capacity they need. So right now it's a lot of the smaller cleanup ones. So I would concur that um, it's slower. Um, the, um, this letter of credit actually ties to uh, the main avenue, which is the large single family home developments. Uh, there's a lot of vacant lots in that. That's been a little bit slower uh, getting uh, going. The Eflin's Gate North are the vertical townhomes. Those are almost complete. We don't actually have a lot of credit on uh, those, so um, it, it, it's part of the part of it is just the momentum of getting that going. So, uh, but we can definitely try to uh, push the developer and, and draw the line in the sand. Do you want to set up data now? I, I would like to. In a little history to this is, you know, this came up maybe two months ago because the, the stop signs weren't in, and I'm like, you know, how do, how do we not have the stop signs in yet? So. Oh, okay, you ask them and then you put it in. But there's still other signage and things that are missing out there. And, you know, and I understand it's a money issue too, but when you drive through there, it doesn't 
look finished. So as a home builder, and I only speak for myself, if I'm driving through there, I'm like, I don't want to move here. It looks like it's unfinished, kind of abandoned. So I, I look at it as the other ways. You know, we, we draw a line in the sand and we say, hey, you have until June to get this stuff done. And and make it look finished, make it make it look more desirable, you know, just driving through there. It's you know, the signage is is just a small part of what really needs to be done right there. I asked the same question, not not the same question to Mike, but I'd ask it why why this reduction? Because coming down to hundred eleven thousand dollars aren't grant can go very quickly, we all know that, especially in the development. Um, and you had said that um, Mike Salomovich has been out there and verified that a lot of the sort Mike gave me um, a sheet that showed what was outstanding, I believe, was last year when it was reduced from four hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars down to some down where it's currently, or to three hundred two thousand. Now we're on from this down even further. Um, and you had said that the only things left to be done was about eighty-six thousand dollars worth of work. And again, that well, that might seem like a lot of money. I know that they can go very quickly. So I have not been there since the park dedication. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what. I have not been through there. Have you been through the recent? Yeah, we went through their public safety because of the missing signage. And, you know, I, I love the development. You know, I, I love the townhouse area. I love Green Park. Um, I just think that we need to, to draw a line, a, sand, a line in the sand with this and, and get it done. Um, we definitely do. Well, we can do it. I'm not saying. I would agree with that. I just want to make sure there's enough money left on the table to do right, what needs to be right. done. And I can verify that. That's not a lot of money when you, when you look at it. I've done C blankets and I've done backfill and leaving them with hundred thousand dollars, I just don't know, I don't want them coming back and saying I don't have the money, and we were just give them hundred thousand dollars back. Right. Two hundred thousand dollars, we could get this done. You know, you could you could do the, well, I can say, I don't want to say that because I, I haven't measured out how much of the, this C <coughs> blanket and things, but. Um, the only reason I'd be willing to go to 111 today is because he does not have an LLC on the north portion. And so he is kind of playing with us and accommodating both subdivisions at the same time. So I would be comfortable with saying I'd be a supportive of reducing down to 111 as long as we know that a firm punch list will be done by middle of 2018. Why don't we go for June 1st, 2018? He's got two months of springtime already in there. Okay, let the developer have that. I'll make a phone call. I just want to make sure Any other questions? But I don't know, are we, do we feel comfortable with what's left in there? As far as, I mean, is he asking for this? Is it something we're just giving to him? He's asking for it. He believes actually. No, and, and the there. reason, what is he going, what is he going to do with that? Is he going to do the, the repairs? Is he doing that for more, did he say the reason? The developer actually believes that he's complete, and we pointed out areas that we believe he's not, uh, and that's why we're holding back uh, the balance. <coughs> Normally, if it's 100% complete, you'd be releasing the letter of credit. Um, we do not believe that um, he's finalized on the order. Okay. I mean, if you're not comfortable with it, hold up. Well, if he needs something to do some of the repairs, <laughs> yeah, I can see the point. Yeah. Mike's, and he stuck to his, everything he told us he did. Correct. So Mike Salomovich has reviewed, uh, he's, he's done field inspections, he realizes there's there's open items. Uh, he's gone through this list and is comfortable with uh, the dollars that are remaining. He's the one that came up with the numbers uh, off uh, of this list. Uh, a lot of what uh, is open is what I would classify as more cosmetic. Um, uh, there's definitely a cost to it, um, but the main infrastructure uh, items uh, were the roads and the storm uh, sewer systems. Those are the main things that we were worried about. Not that backfilling behind curbs or uh, making sure that you know the uh, stormwater drain, you know, uh, they're cleaning. Those, those are important. Um, and just to give you an example, we on the original list there's um, fifty-nine thousand held back for cleaning manholes, adjustments of manholes. Uh, uh, frames and grates, installing benches. Um, the vast majority of that uh, we believe is in, but it needs to be verified. Uh, there's also uh, 27,000 in for backfilling of curbs, removing dirt uh, stockpiles, uh, double checking ADA um, domes, those are the uh, things at the edge of, uh, of sidewalks. Uh, just to use that, the developer believes those are in, 
we believe that it would be a different staff, so we're holding back that money. Plus, there's about 27,000 uh, miscellaneous um, for signage and, and other things that uh, uh, could possibly handle us. So, I think we're comfortable on that there's been a good faith effort. It has been slow, and it has been slow, quite frankly, for the last 10 plus years. Um, so, we're trying to show a good faith effort of the things that he has done and leaving enough space for what we still feel we need coverage. And, and I will add to that, when we asked for the stop signs to be installed, they were installed very quickly, within two days. He does need pride. Hmm? He does need pride. Yeah. Mike's punch list was in the neighborhood of $86,000. That's what. Yeah, that's so what that, that's actually a developer plus those miscellaneous. We didn't go out and, and price out every individual little sign. There's things like, there's turnarounds, you need signage for that, and things like that. So the main signage is like tree signage is up, but there's definitely miscellaneous things that need to be. <coughs> and we're comfortable with the one eleven. And that's the number that came up, yes. So if the board's not comfortable, you can always table it and uh, postpone it when it's not here. So uh, if you want to hear from them, we can definitely table it. Um, so it's up to the board. Yes, it is. I'm fine with it. I'm going to ask to abstain from the conversation. All right. I'll call the call. Trustee Gray? Aye. Trustee Berry? Aye. Trustee Max Petrucci is abstaining. Trustee Sweets? Aye. And Trustee Rogers? Aye. Motion carries. Is there any old business? Is there any new business? With our motion to adjourn. So, Trustee Gray. I'll second. Trustee Sweet. Motion. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 aye.